Live on WFLA Now, this is Run for Fun with running enthusiast Lee Spann. Well, welcome back to the WFLA Now Stream Center for this episode of Run for Fun. I'm meteorologist Lee Spann here at the WFLA uh, News Center in Tampa. But as you just heard, I'm also a running enthusiast. I wanted to create this show to help spread my love of running because I just wanted to show that just doing a few, I mean, literally a few simple things will really help you find that, in fact, running can be fun. And, of course, joining me again this week is Tampa running coach Maria Williams. Good morning, Maria. Good morning, Lee. Nice to see you this morning. Yes, yes, we are. Um, you know, finally started to feel some cool weather here in Tampa while we're running. It's not, it's not cold, but it's, it's not. It was so nice last night. It was so nice. Yeah, this morning, the past couple of mornings, we've had some fog here, but we have our winter weather coming this weekend. Yeah. I will take it's, it's to me. It's like, <laughs> it's like summer, Florida summer, and then Maine summer in Florida. Right. So Maria grew <laughs> up in Maine. And so she's like, yeah, I pretty much get to live so in summer year basically round. Basically summer year round. <laughs> and, um, and so today we, you know, we just, we're just in now in our fourth episode, fourth episode of yeah, Run for so, Fun. So exciting. Starting to hear from people. And we wanted to let you know to please reach out to us. So one of the folks who reached out to us was Jules Lovejoy. And she says after episode two, she ate before she ran three miles, and she said, I rolled out my legs, which we were talking about foam rolling, because of your suggestions, and I felt much better on my run than I have in a while. So thank you. Um, and Maria gave those suggestions that you certainly want to eat before a run because that will yeah. tire you out almost immediately. And I'm glad she foam rolled. That's good, too. You know, I, I haven't even done that since you. Be Come on, be Lee, the, be Lee, <laughs> Lee. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a great suggestion because what you had said was that it makes you um, not that first mile is not as hard because your muscles have already really yeah. been sort of broken up a little bit. Yeah. It eases that warm up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I also wanted somebody's to, listening to me. Thank you, it might Jules. not be you, Lee, but yeah. <laughs> I, I, I do listen. Just okay. it takes a little while to implement. I'm not as good That's as good. Jules. And then we heard from Mike and he says, what about stretching before and after running? So we know this is probably going to be an episode in the weeks to yeah. come, but there's some pretty easy things to talk about with what to do before and after. Yeah, I think the basic thing about stretching, um, and it's the old school thing is is static stretching. And static stretching, while very important, should be done after a run. And so what, tell me what a static is. A static stretch is a stretch you hold for, for 30 seconds um, or longer, um, and you hold in one place. But really, before a run, you want to stretch using dynamic stretches, which is uh, stretches that are meant to prepare you your body to work. Um, so like, you know, butt kicks, um, you know, lunges, stuff that, you know, activates your glutes and tells your body and get, gets your body ready to run. And then afterwards, that's when you after do, the yes. static stretching and I actually like to static stretch before bed. That's okay. actually a good time to stretch. So you don't have to do it immediately nope. after running or after exercising. Nope. You just need to do it every day, every day. <laughs> Just like you're supposed to foam roll every day. That's right. <laughs> wow. There's all the things. So we love hearing from you guys and get answering your questions. I'm like I said, I'm sure there will be a, a full 30 minute episode on stretching in the in the weeks to yes. come. But but we wanted to make sure to answer Mike's question. And if you I'm listening, if you're listening, if you're if you're actually taking Maria up on her suggestions, which yeah. I do most of the time, I just didn't foam roll before my my run since the episode two. Uh, we would love to hear from that as well. And then we'll continue, of course, to to create episodes based on the things that, that you ask about as well. Yes, please ask us questions. That's what we're here for. And one of the things that Jules brought up was that she ate before her run. And so that's going to lead us into today's topic, which is what to eat before and after a run, because both of those are very important and um, why these foods can help. So, you know, we'll start with before we'll start chronologically so what to eat before a run and so i'm going to bring in maria because this is something that we um that i that, that she has drilled into me and i definitely do i just definitely mm -hmm. taking this one coach yeah so typically people typically start running to lose weight mm -hmm. and so they think well if i want to lose weight i should probably not eat before i run because i'll burn more calories but the reality of it is we really burn more calories when we eat because our body is more efficient and can burn calories easier. And so 
but you have to be sort of careful yes, about you what careful. you put your what you eat before. Yeah, um, and it's also something your stomach you, you want to train your stomach. So whatever you train your stomach to do, it will do. So even if it's a little bit uncomfortable at first, if you keep doing it, your your body will get used to it. So you want to eat things that are um, low in fiber and high in carbs, which uh, again. Carbs get a real bad rap these days. Yeah, but, not in my world they don't get not a bad in, rap. But <laughs> not in running because your 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 muscles, your body really needs to burn yes. that before. And it it's not going to make you fat to eat the no, carbs and then go running. No, I mean carbs that you burn during the day are not going to make you overweight. So, um, you know, even if it's just a hundred calories, a lot of people get up out of bed and and run and they don't want to, and they don't feel particularly hungry mm -hmm. in the morning. So I have a, I literally have a fig Newton, one fig Newton. It's a hundred calories. It gives me a little sugar and glucose in to get my metabolism up and running. And then, then I go. And then I put on their caffeine because I probably get this question as much as I get anything. Mm -hmm. Can I have caffeine? Can I have my cup of coffee before I go for a ride? And the answer to that is it depends. It depends, <laughs> it depends on you, yeah. not on anything else. Yeah. So I've been running for 23 years and I have literally gotten up every morning and I have a cup of coffee. My cute husband always brings me a cup of coffee in the morning. Sweet so Luke. I know I'm so lucky. So I have a cup of coffee and and I get my it helps me get my bowels moving in the morning before I run. And I have done it so religiously that now it is my body knows what to do right it knows it needs coffee it needs a run it needs a little bit of fig newton <laughs> so i've trained it that way if you're not if you haven't trained your body that way you have to be careful with caffeine because it will make you go to the bathroom yes uh so that, that's what it depends on is yes. if you every morning get up and have a cup of coffee then you should get up and have a cup of coffee and then go yes. for a run because that's what your body is used to yes don't think oh, this will give me the jolt I need to get out of bed earlier because I'm going running. Yeah. Because you will be on a search for a porta potty. Yes. <sighs> a, yes, a search for a porta potty. Um, and porta potties are a big, it's a big thing with runners because we have digestive issues, especially in the morning. Now, it does matter when, when you're trying to go, well, you don't want to get stuck going to the bathroom a million times during a run. So it does matter what you eat the day before too. Yes. So just... The night before, try not to, well, alcohol, alcohol really mm -hmm. causes you to go to the bathroom and high fat causes you to go to the bathroom. So just try to eat your fat earlier in the day and maybe leave it out of your dinner. Not, it, not quite as much fat. And so, but you're not saying necessarily to carbo load even before no, every, no, every no. night. You're just saying those high fiber things, maybe the yes. fried food, I mean, sorry, the high fat things like the like fried yes. foods and things like that. May, maybe enjoy that for lunch. Yes, Is that what you're yes, for lunch. And then kind of, you know, if you have porta potty troubles, some people have iron clad stomachs that can eat anything. Bless you. But <laughs> most of us can't. I know that was the one thing with my son when he learned to run. He was shocked at the at the porta potty issues, and he was like, "Why do you do this, Mama?" Yeah. I'm like, "This is gross." I'm like, "It's not. It's, well, you're, it's you're sort just of, what we do." And you're sort of out there, and you're very vulnerable. Like, yes, you, know, you, you can are. you can either knock on a on a stranger's door, or you can look for a porta potty, or if, or, because, or sometimes a bush. Yeah. Sometimes it's really and maybe there's a Seven Eleven that's open twenty four hours. Yes, and if it happens to you, don't let it deter you from running because you can train yourself to not have to go to the bathroom. Yeah. I rarely have to go to a bathroom, to the bathroom during a run, unless I make a mistake with my eating. So you can, you can train yourself to do whatever. So don't give up if it's happening a lot. So let's give them some examples of what they can eat. I know you said you do Fig Newtons. So, I mean, it, these are not high end things. I mean, it's, it's graham crackers and bananas and yeah. toast and some sort of nut butter. Pop don't tarts. have to have fancy stuff. No, by any means. A lot of my runners eat graham crackers. A lot of my runners eat pop tarts. I got, I'm, I'm, I'm a pop tart, which is really easy. And then I also um, do a honey stinger. And so this is like if anyone's ever had a stroop waffle, they're yeah. delicious, first of all. And so, um, and this one has they have a this one has 150 calories, and it takes me about yeah. 30 seconds to eat. And it's yummy. And I, I do that when I get off out of bed. And it's, Tastes it's really, really good yummy. with coffee too, actually. <laughs> Well, I cannot do coffee <laughs> before I go for a run. That's I'm a no, Maria's a yes. That's funny. Yeah. So what? 
what happened? Is the bathroom stuff an issue for you? If you go- well, I just never drink coffee when I wake up. Oh so my gosh. The, um, but you drink it later? Mm-hmm. That's so better drink, for your hormones, actually. I drink the, the one cup of coffee a day at 4 a.m. before we go on the air at 4.30. Oh, I keep so forgetting you have that crazy yeah, So, schedule. yeah, so yeah. I'm, up, I'm up way early in the morning. And, you know, I'm, I'm at work at 2. But, again, I don't drink any coffee before or any, have any caffeine until 4 o'clock because then that gives mm-hmm. me that. Because you know, I've, been, I've been working at my desk doing doing the forecast and making the graphics and things like that. So I've kind of sort of been sedentary for two hours. Oh, yeah. And so I need something to kind of pick me back up before we go oh, on TV sense. at 4 a.m., 4.30. So. Well, and when I'm watching you on TV, because that's what I do when I drink my coffee in the morning is I watch the news well, with Lee. I hope that more, I hope that more <laughs> people do that. So, And yeah. so let's talk a little bit about why the things are on the screen now. The banana might be good, why toast it, like sort of the maybe not necessarily the science but but the reason behind you'd want to do some of these examples it's easy digestible carbs and prop and carbs are our primary source of fuel so it goes right into your system and and makes you ready to work uh, honestly if you're trying to lose weight um have a have a little something and then go for a 35 to 45 minute run yeah uh, maria was just talking about that so the time is important too because mm-hmm. Once you get past, you know, an hour or more, then you need more food. So if you're yeah. just trying to lose weight, there's yeah. a, there's sort of a sweet spot where you still need to eat, but you can not go yes. long enough to need more food. Yeah, there's a big difference between training for something and losing weight. Yeah. There's a big thing. Um, and the, the difference is when you're running more, you're actually hungrier. And so your hunger cues will actually tell you that you need more than you actually need because it's afraid of, you know, not having enough food. So... If you can keep the run, if if your goal is weight loss, to keep the run to 35 to 45 minutes, then you don't need your, your hunger signals aren't going to go wacky on you and you're going to be able to keep your, you know, food pretty, you know, where it needs to be for weight loss. And so if you, I mean, just kind of rough, you know, rough estimate. So if you eat about 100 calories before you go, one mm-hmm. Big Newton, one of these Honey Singers, and then you run for at a moderate, even slow pace for 35 to 45 mm-hmm. minutes, you're burning more than 100 calories. So yes. you're, you're certainly a net, you're a net benefit there for yes. sure. Well, and actually the research shows that if you go too far into a deficit, that's when the weight loss becomes a problem, like trying to lose weight and, and the hormone fluctuations and all that stuff and the cortisol that we talked about last mm-hmm. week getting too high. If you're in too far of a deficit. So if you don't eat, you're going, you're digging yourself into a hole and it's hard to get out of. It makes you tired then you don't want to run the next day and that makes you tired all day and you don't get that benefit of the energy you feel after a run and you should that yes Maria says if you are tired 20 minutes after you ran something is wrong you, yeah you didn't eat enough Something's you went too wrong. hard yes. you went too long you you know we were and a lot of it can come down to you didn't maybe didn't eat enough it at the didn't beginning. eat enough yeah you just you really don't want to go into a huge deficit um Especially, you know, if you're running longer, make sure you eat something after too. Yeah, so we'll so we'll we'll, we'll transition into that because a lot of times people will finish their run and then they jump in the shower and mm-hmm. hopefully they've had some sort of some sort of electrolyte drinks. Especially if you're listening to us in the Tampa or Florida area, all yes. year long it, it's hot enough that you need more than just water. Yes, definitely take in electrolytes um, and definitely try to. Sometimes when you're running in the heat in Florida, sometimes it makes you not hungry. Yes. So you, and just, just because make you're not yourself. hungry, you have to kind of make yourself eat. And afterward. you should do it relatively quickly. I mean, yes. within 30 minutes, you yes. have to get this, this post run food into your body. And, yes. And so you, this is another thing you have to learn to, or to teach your body to accept the food because yes. you, you you know, you, you don't feel like it, especially in those long, long, long summer months. Yeah. It can be nauseating sometimes to eat after run but if you can always find something it doesn't have to be a tremendous amount of food it can be a chocolate milk i mean you can drink a chocolate milk it just has to be carbs and it has to be protein we got to rebuild our muscles we got to replenish our glycogen stores okay so when you do any sort of exercising you're you're breaking down your muscles so that's why Mm -hmm. protein you didn't need it as much at the beginning of the run even though you needed some you need it now after the run because you want to build, you rebuild those muscles yes. so that you can go again tomorrow. Yes, and it helps with recovery and it makes you less sore. And so, again, everything we do is to make the next day stronger. Mm-hmm. So we're not, so that we can go more and we can go longer. So that's the goal. 
So, um, so you still need carbs because I think a lot of people will go, go to like full protein, especially people who go to the yes. gym a lot. It's all full protein, full protein, but yeah, you still you need still to replace. You just carbs. used all of your glycogen stores in your muscles. You use which glycogen is carbohydrates in your muscles. Yeah. So you just used it all. Yeah, we just got to put it back. Yeah, and it's and there's some you don't yeah. have to go to you know eggs, bacon, you know sausage and and pancakes. Yeah, no, you can I'm, just get yeah. one egg. I egg. use see this. Premier protein shake. It's I use this and I I take a banana with it. It's so easy. It's quick. Um, sometimes I will do a shake. Um, I know Featherstone Nutrition, who I love. Um, she she says do a shower shake. Yes, which I love. Like she makes a shake and she brings it into the in, shower. Into with the her. shower. Yeah. And then she asks people on her Instagram to show me your shower shake because yeah. and then more people have done it and it's it's because it's so hard to get that to think about it when you know you need to get in the shower and you yeah. got to get the kids ready for school and you got to do all these things. It's like, yeah, make the shake, take it into the shower. Yeah. And the neat part about that is actually when you do that, then you don't have to worry about eating for a while. You can wait till you're hungry after that. Yes. So and I, a, usually I like to say, listen to your hunger signals. That's really important. But after a run, we don't always feel like it. So if you just eat that shake and then wait for you to be hungry again, then you can have a regular meal. And it'll be all right. Yeah. And so, um, and one of the things, you know, if you wanted to eat a little Greek yogurt that has some protein in it, uh -huh. oatmeal, you know, there's all these um, protein mixes. I yeah. guess, you know, some people are kind of going away from that to do more you know, natural things, but that's where you get nuts and chocolate milk. I mean, these are all things that are natural and help your body yeah. to recover so that tomorrow you can eat your carbs, you can go for a run, you can eat your protein, and you can uh, rinse and repeat. <laughs> yes. And it actually makes, it makes running fun because when your glycogen stores are filled, it's fun. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. It's not, you can go faster. You can go longer. You cannot feel like death when you don't have enough carbohydrates in your diet and you try to run. It's miserable. Your heart rate's going to be higher. You, you can get faint. It's just, I mean, your body can get used to it, but it's not fun. It's not fun. It's and not I think fun. that is yeah. what, um, you know, with this, with this show that we've been trying to show is that, Yes, of course you can get out and, and and make yourself go run every day or exercise every day or do the thing every day. Yeah. But wouldn't it be so much better if it was just a little more fun? I mean, and then yeah. you would want to be out there and you might want to do it more often. And that's what I found in running because I was able to, and it, it took me a while, but it, thankfully I, I, I quickly found Maria who, who who told me all these little secrets. I feel like they're just little things that, yes. that if you weren't doing them, running is a chore. And it, again, we still, people do chores. You, you, you clean your house, yeah. you go for your run, you exercise. But by making it not be painful, by, you know, making it uh, feel so much, have that energy afterwards, that sort of, a, you know, It emotional, should add to your life. It should really yes. add to your life. And again, that's mm -hmm. what, you know, we have oatmeal. That, I mean, again, just, it doesn't have to be, it does not have to be hard. Is we're no. talking about like scramble an egg, put an egg in the microwave, and, and 45 minutes later you you know you just have to rebuild those muscles that, that you 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 they've worked really hard for you. Yes, they've worked really hard for you. Be, be nice to them. So much so much of it, people think is punishment. Yeah, and it's not punishment. This is like helping your body grow and be stronger. It's helping your heart grow and be stronger. And so so much about that is mindset. You know, just mm -hmm. trying to. To reframe your frame of mind regarding running and saying, I can't tell you how many people have said, oh, I hate running, coach. I just hate running. And I'm like, well, first of all, you're not allowed to say that you hate running until you've done it for six to eight weeks consistently and you've done the right things. You've right. put the right things in your body to do it. And then tell me in six to eight weeks if you hate running. Because how many of them do yeah. come uh, back in six to eight? Not very many not people. Many. Yeah. Part of it's getting off the couch. And, they, and you know, people think you know, getting off the couch is easy for us too. And it's just, it's not, we, we gave ourselves the six to eight weeks. Um, and we want you guys to do that. Yeah. And, um, I know we've talked a little bit about, um, what to eat before and after. And as long as you're going for less than an hour, that is all you need to do. All that's it. That's it. It's very simple. It, it, if you want to carry some Gatorade or some sports drinks with you, you can, but you don't have to. Yeah. You can have those after and before. You don't, yeah. you know. 35 to 45 minutes, yeah. you don't need very much at all. So, you just don't. Yeah. And so that, again, that helps mm -hmm. with the weight loss. That helps with the way you feel.
because if if you're if you're dragging all day, I even had one of the comments um, I didn't choose on the on um, from from Facebook, but again, continue to let us know. Uh, they said, well, you know, what about the headache I get when I'm done? Oh yeah, that's that's actually related to food too. Yeah, headaches, headaches. Because if you're under carbed and you try to run and you try to, your heart rate is too high, your cortisol is too high, and you're going to get a headache. Yeah. So yeah. A, a lot of this comes down to making sure you're you know you're hydrated and that you've eaten enough. And yeah, and you is, could be under electrolyted too yeah. oh especially electrolytes. yeah especially in the summer mm -hmm. and that could you know you got to really keep that in mind in the summer around here but that can give you a headache even if you're walking yeah. around running errands and not even exercising exercising yeah. if you're not drinking enough electrolytes typically the headaches in florida are from running too hard in the heat yeah if you're running too hard in the heat you're going to get a headache so you either you slow down and yeah hydrate hydrate and eat and, and eat and all of those things help you. And actually, the eating helps you stay hydrated. Yes. So if, you're, if your glycogen stores are full, then you're going to be hydrated better, too, because it carries, it carries water in your muscles. So you're going to stay hydrated. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. well, more carbs for me, then. That's yeah. <laughs> I'm the carb queen. I am so sick and tired of the, the hatred of carbs. I can't stand that. And, and you know, and, and I hate to say it, I mean, I'll, I, that, um, you know, it, Theoretically, I know that I should be doing the the less refined carbs, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I I love my white carbs too. I know. Well, white carbs, <sighs> your body really can't tell the difference between the carbs. So okay. the only difference is when you have carbs that have high fiber, they're slower released through your system. So normally, if you're like trying to lose weight, you definitely want to have higher fiber carbs. But just before you run, just stay away from those high fiber carbs. Because those will make you go to the bathroom, <laughs> which we normally want in everyday life. We want to go to the bathroom yes. more like that. That's good. But with running, just stick to the, you know, Easy, simple carbs simple. right before you run. Nice. The carbs that they that normally in your everyday life you're told you can't have. Yeah. So in that 30 and 45 minutes before I mean, a run, how you cool get is to that? Have them. I mean, if you want some Skittles, now's the time <laughs> to eat some Skittles right before you run. Like. I mean, people say all the time, I'm like, I know Skittles are bad, but you know, if I'm going to have Skittles, it'll, it's probably going to be before a run That's or be, after a run yeah. <laughs> to I mean, replenish my skills. So, so look what freedom we're giving you. The, I the know. The reason it can be fun. Who told the, you to eat Skittles? Coach <laughs> told you to eat Skittles. No, she didn't tell you to eat I didn't the, tell you to eat Skittles, but yes, but the sour ones are the best. They really are. I love all, I love all the candies, but yes, you can. Um, your body can will immediately just use that. Up. Yes, and so use it. what what normally happens is people eat them and then they sit on the couch and watch television yes. and eat them. And there we have the problem. Yes, exactly. And actually, most of us are sedentary, so yeah, that's and that's what we're trying to do. We want to get you off the couch. So if you can have just a handful of Skittles and get off the couch, maybe. Whatever Maybe we're on to something. Whatever it takes. <laughs> the um, and then I just want to quickly um, for those who may be listening and we appreciate it who are a little bit farther along in their running, um, and they do want to go for longer than an hour. There are some things now we yes. have a little bit more complex things, and we won't talk about this too much because if you're that far along, you probably have already felt the need yeah. to get something. But you have to eat something while you're running. Yeah, and actually, a lot of my runners still don't eat. They still think they're going to burn more calories if they don't eat during their run. But actually, in a longer run, when you're running, anything over an hour, you want to take in something. Yeah. You want to take in, like, I have these, I use these Martin gels. I love these. Mm -hmm. They're so good. I don't know if you can. It's, um, this one doesn't have caffeine. Some of them do have yeah. caffeine. Um, if you're going over an hour, you want, if it's an easy run, you still can do, like, every 45 minutes. If you have a hard run that's over an hour, I would suggest every 30 minutes. So these are anything yep. that has calories and quickly use yeah. basically sugar. And you sugary. don't have to use a gel, actually. Yeah. You can use, I, some of my runners use dates. I was about to say, I've heard some people use yeah. dates. And so is there anything to them versus, you, know, you certainly wouldn't want to do a prune, but some other sort of, yeah. of, of fruit or vegetable? I mean, apricots, dates, those kind of things. You have to, those have fiber, so you have to look out. Um, I would say, you know, some people, one of my runners uses bananas. She takes bananas with her. I mean... And you don't think, what, I mean, like any, like, I mean, speaking of Skittles, like, could you just take Skittles? You can, yeah, Skittles yeah. are fine. You can take any of that stuff. The only difference is they don't have the extra, like, salt that you need, the extra electrolytes. So 
you might want to have an electrolyte drink with you when you do that. Um, but you don't have to be fancy about it. It's yeah. just really like 100 to 200 calories an hour um, if you're going over 45 minutes. Okay. Really. Actually, it's really over an hour. So there you go. Now yeah. now we're telling you you can eat Skittles while you're... <laughs> I mean, look at all the things. <laughs> all the Skittles you can have now. All I mean, them. honestly, these sport beans... Yeah, that's what that's kind these of what are sports think. beans. They're just fancy jelly beans. I mean, they're made by jelly beans. Yeah, they're <laughs> just yeah, they're just fancy, and they have electrolytes in them. Yeah, so they have a, you know they have extra vitamins and stuff like that in them. Again, I said this before. People are said you know people say I don't want to take something that's not natural, and I'm like, well, if you're running over an hour, it's probably not natural. So you your stomach is going to struggle. So you need to find something that is designed to work with your stomach. And these things are designed not to hurt your stomach. Yeah, science, that doesn't mean they science. don't, yeah, they <laughs> doesn't mean they're not going to hurt your stomach. I would say give it a few times. Like you've got to like train your body and don't just try it one time and be like, this doesn't work. Um, try it for a few weeks and then you can decide it doesn't work and then switch brands. You yeah. might need to switch a brand. Um, there's Huma, Huma has chia seeds in it. Chia seeds are great because they help you Stay hydrated. Um, a lot of my runners like Huma. Uh, that's another good one. But, um, yeah, that's only if you're going over an hour. Yeah. So, again, I just wanted to touch, you know, to say, like, if you, as you're running, as you're building up with our episodes and you go from 30 to 45 minutes up to an hour, now you may think, you know, you get to that end of that run and be like, I don't feel good. Like, now, now I don't yeah. have that energy. And so I just wanted to, to say if it's over an hour – there, there's a reason why you're losing energy and it's yeah. because you need to eat And you don't want to bonk. Run. That also makes it not fun to run, awesome. and it also makes you not want to do it again. Yeah. So let's not bonk. We are not going to bonk. Exactly. <laughs> we, uh, you know, the we, we talked about this today. You know, we really want to thank everyone for, for listening and commenting um, on Facebook. And on, um, you know, we're, we're seeing it on the podcast, and we're seeing it on YouTube. Um, but we hope this has really been helpful because, again, a lot of people think about running as either just for exercise or just for some sort of punishment. And if you're just doing it to lose weight, that's okay. Yeah, but you just got to make sure that you're eating mm -hmm. and doing the right things, so that so that it it's also fun. Because if you're if if it's so uncomfortable and so awful, you're not going to get out and and do it consistently, and then it's not going to be a part of a healthy lifestyle. And when we tell you that pop tarts and skittles can be a part of actually a healthy lifestyle that's fun yeah that i think that's fun <laughs> i find it super fun yeah so, i mean obviously anything in mod everything's in uh, moderation yes. i mean that's that's the key i mean we don't want to demonize any food i think that's that's the thing that our culture has done so much lately is just demonized food we can't have this we can't have that we can't have this but let's talk about the things we can have <laughs> yes and ways that we can make you know, in incorporate that yes. into our lives and by adding in running and by adding in it as a, as a consistent part of your yes. lifestyle, then you fit these other fun things into your life as well. Yes. And it really, I That's mean. That's the thing about running. It burns so many calories in such a short amount of time. Yeah. Like I, for a three mile run, you're burning the same amount of calories as, as if you go on a three mile walk, but a three mile walk takes a lot longer than a three <laughs> mile run. Yes. I mean, 30 minutes or 30 to 35 minutes, you're done. You've, yeah. You're back in your house. Otherwise it's an hour. Yeah. So like, it's all about time management, you know? And we uh, we all know everyone's busy. And yeah. so these are things we're trying to tell you that you can buy at the grocery store to, to eat ahead of time. Yeah. Probably already have bananas in your house. So um, going back through, uh, just a quick recap, before the run, we're looking at carbs that are easy to digest. Yes. And if you really struggle with that, you can take a gel before you, before you run in the morning if you don't want to eat something, you know, you don't want to chew. Right. And again, these are these things you buy at the mostly at the running stores. Yeah. They're all, it's almost like a little packet of of cake icing. I guess some of them yes. are a little yeah. So it's sort of like gel that's good, ice that's good, um, yeah. cake icing. And you just squirt that right into yep, your mouth. Hundred calories. And if you just don't feel like eating, just yep. do that. But I'm all for the fig newtons, I'm all for the pop tarts, I'm all for the things that are already in people's cupboards anyway. Yeah. So just don't run on an empty stomach. I really can't stand that. Enjoy your coffee if you like coffee. Afterwards, rebuild those muscles so that they're ready for tomorrow's run. Because if you just keep breaking down your muscles, eventually your muscles are going to stop working for you. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so eggs, uh, protein shakes, 
get a little bit of carbs in there with with some oatmeal. Cereal, actually, cereal's great. Like cold cereal. Yeah, like, with milk. Oh yeah, and chocolate milk, which I love. I always keep chocolate milk in my in my refrigerator because it is so. Chocolate easy. milk's great for like after a race and stuff. If yeah. you you know, if you don't have anything handy. So thank you everybody for watching again. Now keep in mind that we are going to be on the WFLA app every Tuesday at around nine thirty ish, nine thirty ish, and then we're also after we're done, we're on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. So um, it's and please been, ask us questions. Please ask us questions we because want we the questions we want to help people. Yeah, and so we hope that we helped with uh, you know how quick ways of stretching, dynamic and before, static yeah. afterwards. We hope we helped with your headaches. And that you can eat some fun foods. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, we'll and see. if you have poop questions, you can ask those too. These poop, poop <laughs> questions are going to come up a lot. Yeah. We're going to talk about them a lot because that's what runners do. And I hope that you enjoy those. Yes. All right. We'll see you next Tuesday, everybody. Goodbye. Bye.